All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to be working on the Grand Hauler body. We'll split it up into two videos. So in this one, we'll be getting all the little bits and pieces together. OK, then off we go. First, we'll need to dismantle quite a bit of the truck. Most of the electronics need to come out. The front plate needs to come off the chassis so we can remove the seat bases for paint. The rear plate, too. This one has the little golf tee bits that could do with some black paint. And at some point, we might strip the chrome off the little platform as well. Now we've got that lot off, we can remove the fuel tanks, air tanks and the steps. All of them need some sort of detail painting. At the back, we need to remove the rear bumper so we can get at the screws that hold the rear light covers on. It's a similar story with the cab. We need to remove the air boxes and the dashboard so we can paint them. In addition to those bits, we need the steering column, the steering wheel, and the two seats from the P-Tree. So, as a start, we've got quite a few bits to paint. The chrome parts need masking, as we only want to paint the details, not the whole thing. This is where being really careful pays off. We want a nice crisp edge to the paint. Quality masking tape helps a lot too. After masking, I've gone around and lightly scuffed up the chrome to help the primer stick. If you paint directly on the chrome, most paints will chip off fairly easily. The paint process consists of a couple of thin coats of grey primer, followed by a few light coats of matte black, just enough that the grey doesn't show through anymore. After paint, we have the two seat bases. I masked off the tops to make them easier to glue. The steps, I've painted the grips with some brush on matte black. The air tanks, and the only bits that I've painted are the strappy bits. Here's the air boxes. The only paint here is on the hoses to make them look a bit more like rubber. And the fuel tanks, black straps again, and I painted the filler cap black too, just so they show up. Here's the exhaust tips. The insides are painted with brush on matte black, and the halves have been glued together with some poly cement. The seats, these were painted in ultra matte sand beige and given a quick coat of gloss clear. Using the trick of spraying from far too far away, so the clear coat dries a little on the way down, giving a slightly lumpy surface. The two golf tees, just plain matte black. The two rear light covers, matte black again. The steering column, painted black. Some silver details on the stalks, and then clear coated with some gloss. The steering wheel's a bit more work. I painted it matte black first then detailed the rim with some earthy brown paints to make it look like wood, then silver for the spokes, followed by some gloss clear. The last kit part is the dashboard, which is painted up to match the seats. That just leaves this little plate. It's cut from some 2mm styrene, so it will fit between the seat bases with some screws and standoffs. It will give us a little hidden area to run the motor wires to the front. Right, first bit of gluing, we need to attach the seats to their bases, but rather than use glue like the poly cement, we'll use Plasti Weld, and get a really strong joint. It's not so much for the regular running, but when the body's removed, the seats are going to be a little bit vulnerable to getting knocked. All we need to do is hold the base in place, and apply a couple of drops of Plasti Weld to each side. Now we can carefully put it to one side, and after 20 minutes or so, they'll be strong enough to fit. The dashboard needs some Plasti Weld too for the steering column, but first we need to stick the dash decals on. We've got number 25 and 26 on the decal sheet. One's got the usual gauges, and the other has a large screen sat-nav. Very nice. We need to trim them as close as possible to the printed bit. A small sharp pair of scissors does the job nicely. To fit them, we can peel the decal partially off the backing and trim a little off. Now we can perfectly position the decal, stick down the exposed bit of the sticky, and peel the rest of the backing off. It's a simple little technique. It works a treat on anything other than the really small decals. Perfect alignment every time. Next we need to stick the steering column in. You can see where I've masked off the area, so we've got naked plastic for the gluing surface. Plasti Weld really doesn't like working through paint. The joint will be a little bit delicate for a while, so before we fit the steering wheel, we'll need to let it harden up. The rear light covers need to be refitted. It's just the three 2mm self tappers on each side. We need to be a bit extra careful about slipping, as it would be all too easy to scrape the paint. Front platform next. The only difference here is I've drilled and tapped to M3 three holes between the seats for the little cover plate. The seats fit with a single self tapper through the bottom, making sure the bases are lined up with the ridges moulded into the platform. 
The cover plate has three countersunk holes that line up with the holes in the platform. To fit it, we've got three M3 countersunk nylon screws with the heads coloured black. So we get a gap, we've got some 5mm standoffs that slip over the screw threads. All we do is install the screws so they're just nipped up, and then from the bottom we need to apply a little glue. Good old Yoohoo Paw works a treat for nylon and plastic. We just smear it over the threads, then we loosen the screws and re-tighten them to get some of the glue where we really need it. And now, since we don't really want the excess threads getting in the way of the gearbox, we can snip the ends off with some side cutters. One of the advantages of using nylon screws. And there we go, from the outside of the cab no one will ever see it, and it will hide the wiring to the motor. Here's the rear platform. Not too much to do here, we just need to fit the two golf tees along with the two long self-tappers, and then all the screws need nipping up. I think it does look quite a bit better with them painted black. Okay, the steering columns had a little while to harden up, so we can glue on the wheel. I didn't bother masking off the plastic here, as plasti weld really isn't the right stuff to use. When we fit the body to the chassis, the wheel's going to get joggled about a bit when it goes past the driver's hands. We need a glue with a bit of give in it, so out comes the Yoohoo pour again. All we do is stick a couple of blobs in the centre of the wheel, using a cocktail stick to avoid getting the glue where we don't want it. Then all we do is pop the wheel on, give it a spin to spread out the glue, centre it up, and now we just leave it for a while to go off. We can start the reassembling process now. First up is the step and the air tank. But before we install it, there's a decal to go on the tank. It's number 23 and appears to be a strip of several logos. I'm not really sure what they're for, but they do look rather important. The decals stick on the side of the tank, which helpfully also covers up the seam quite nicely. Now all we do is refit it to the chassis with the four self-tappers. Next is the fuel tank, which also needs a decal. This time it's number 24. A nice list of numbers. I'm not entirely sure what they're for, but I guess it has something to do with what the truck's allowed to tow. They look like something you'd have to display. With the decal on, we can fit the tank with the four M3 screws. And since this should be the final install, we can use thread lock on them too. Same method that we normally use, fit the screw and smear some thread lock on the exposed threads. Then undo the screw a bit and re-tighten it to spread it around. On the other side of the chassis, it's the same, except the air tank doesn't get a decal. The rear and the front platform can go back on now with the appropriate M3 screws. We don't really want to use thread lock on these, the front platform is going to have to come off again to access the gearbox, and there's a good chance the rear one will have to come off when we do the lighting install. That just leaves the rear bumper, which is just two screws into the captive nuts in the cross member. Again, no thread lock, as it's going to have to come off to fit the lights. And now, as they say, it's time for something completely different. It's time to build the driver, who has many parts. They do, however, fit together remarkably well. It's not that easy to spot the seams. All the major body parts come in two halves, front and back. All we do to build them is hold the halves together and apply a few drops of Plasti Weld along the seams. Keep them pressed together for a few seconds and put it off to one side. Repeat for the limbs and the head and give them a few minutes so they don't fall apart. The lower legs can be attached next with a bit more Plasti Weld. The head's going to be a lot easier to paint before we glue it on, so we'll leave it unattached for now. The arms are a bit of a special case too, they need to be positioned so the hands rest on the steering wheel. And the easiest way to do that is glue the arms on when he's sat in the driver's seat. And would you believe it, his foot gets in the way of the nice little wire cover. I think rather than amputate, we should just clip off the corner of the cover. There we go, perfect fit. For access, we need to remove all the windows from the cab and fit the dashboard on its own. But to make up for the windscreen being missing, we need some washers, 0.5mm or so thick between the dash and the mounting posts. Cab on, along with a couple of screws to keep it in place, we only really need the front and rear pair. Ok, with any luck, we should be able to reach in and hold the body in place while we fit the arm. And we can, just, it's a bit of a fiddle, but there's just enough access. We need to put a good couple of drops of Plasti Weld on the shoulder joint on the end of the arm and quickly press it in place, making sure the hand is on the wheel. The joint will be very delicate now, so we need to be extremely careful not to knock it while we set the other one up. The other side is a bit trickier to get at, but with the hole in the roof it is quite doable. Now we just need to give him a few minutes to harden up, 
Then we can remove the body and check the joints. It probably wouldn't hurt to add a couple more drops of Plasti Weld to the joints, just to make sure all the contact areas are welded up nicely. Leave him to fully dry, at least an hour, then spray some plastic primer, keeping the head and body separate. I've stuck some extra blue tack where the head's going to get glued on, just to keep the paint off. When the primer's nice and dry, we can apply some paint. He's a bit shiny at the moment, but I've run out of matte top coat, but it'll do the job for now. To stick him in, we'll just use a little bit of servo tape. It will raise him up ever so slightly, but not enough to really worry about. All we do is stick him down and refit the cab to see how it all fits. And well, it looks pretty good to me. Well, I think we're going to be coming up to the end of this video soon, so we'll pop the windows back in, the dashboard, and the air boxes, just so we can get a look with most of the bits fitted. When fitting the cab, we have to keep an eye on the steering wheel and make sure it doesn't get caught up in the driver's hands. It's a bit of a fiddle, but with the King slash Grand Hauler cab, we get access to the internals through the door at the back, so we're not going to have to take the cab off all that often. That just leaves the exhaust tips, which we'll just press in for now. And there we go. Doesn't appear to have been that much progress, but at this stage it's all about the little details. And we'll definitely have a lot more of them in the next video. Lots of little bits to fit and glue. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you fancy it, and post a comment if you're feeling chatty. Bye guys!